In our last episode, we took care of some of Mr. House's dirty work, eliminating or forcing into compliance some of the other minor factions in the Mojave to prevent them becoming a threat. We can check in with Mr. House when done. Have you destroyed the Brotherhood of Steel? I wiped out the Brotherhood of Steel. Single-handedly destroying a Brotherhood of Steel bunker is quite an accomplishment. Platoons of NCR troops have died trying to do the same. This welcome news comes just in time, as events in the wider world are coming to a head. Aaron Kimball, the president of the new California Republic, is going to visit Hoover Dam to boost morale. Apparently, he hasn't considered the effect on the troops' morale of seeing their beloved leader get his brains blown out by a Legion sniper. I need you to make sure that no harm comes to President Kimball. It's fortunate that you've maintained good relations with the NCR. We must be at least accepted with the NCR to even receive this quest, otherwise we automatically fail it. But being accepted will make this quest very hard to complete. It's much better if we're on really good terms with the NCR. Well, House, before I head on over, I'd like to ask some questions first. Questions like, will President Kimball survive his visit to Hoover Dam? Why do you care whether Kimball lives or dies? I care because he is a known quantity. Not the man so much as the political context he inhabits. Kimball rose to prominence as the hero of the Mojave when he led a campaign of reprisals against tribals who dared to attack NCR citizens. Ordering the occupation of Hoover Dam was his first act of office. As water and electricity flowed to NCR cities, his popularity soared. Conversely, his failure to annex the Mojave these seven years, and the immense costs of occupying a foreign land, have eroded his popular support. So, why don't you want the NCR president to die? Kimball's entire political career is inextricably bound up with the NCR's occupation of the Mojave. It's his war. If I compel the NCR to retreat, Kimball will be the sacrifice offered to the gods so decent NCR citizens can get on with their lives. In retrospect, the Mojave and Hoover Dam will seem like one man's misadventure. Kimball will be blamed, not me, not New Vegas. And if Kimball were to be assassinated? Then the hero of the Mojave would become the martyr of Hoover Dam, And when, subsequently, I force the NCR to retreat, they lick their wounds and dream of righteous vengeance against New Vegas. Hello, embargo. Farewell, tourist economy. I've calculated and recalculated these probabilities. Kimball must live. Calculated and recalculated. Sounds more to me like a lot of fortune-telling. All right, House, so what do you want me to do? Simple. An NCR ranger named Graham is in charge of security arrangements for the visit. Present yourself to him. Let him know you want to help. Given your reputation, it's a near certainty that he'll accept your offer. Don't dally. The precise time of Kimball's visit is a closely guarded secret, but it will happen soon. With that, we begin the quest... You'll know it when it happens. And we need to head to Hoover Dam to talk with Ranger Grant. Now, because my character is idolized with the NCR, this is going to be much easier for me. I can just walk in and everyone recognizes me as a hero. Doors open wide and I have all the access I need. But if our reputation is only at accepted, Mr. House has to send a Securitron to accompany us to the dam to convince the NCR to allow us to help out. Either way, we find Hoover Dam by first traveling to Boulder City. That's right, the very same city we visited in our first episode. If we follow the road out of Boulder City to the east, we see a sign pointing towards Hoover Dam. This gravel road soon connects to the old paved road that used to flow from Boulder City. The road twists and turns. We find another sign pointing us in the right direction until at last we crest a hill to see Hoover Dam. This is what the Legion and the NCR are fighting for. This is the reason so much blood has been spilled. Continuing north, we round a corner to find the Hoover Dam Visitor Center. And right outside is a pre-war monument. 
we see two bronze angels covered in green patina atop a black marble pedestal next to an inscription. This monument is a carbon copy of the real-world monument that sits today outside Hoover Dam. The inscription in the game reads exactly like the one found in the real monument. It is fitting that the flag of our country should fly here in honor of those men who, inspired by a vision of lonely lands made fruitful, conceived this great work, and of those others whose genius and labor made that vision a reality. I said carbon copy, but there's one major difference between the real-world version and the one we find here. In the real world, on the ground below the monument, we find a star chart. This chart was designed to instruct civilizations from the future, who may not speak English or any other known human language, about the date and time that this dam was constructed. And so they recreated an exact map of the stars as seen from Earth at the time of this dam's dedication. Presumably, any future civilization would still understand the mathematics and physics understood at that time to be able to figure out the date this dam was created in their own language. However, in the game, instead of seeing that chart, we just see a tile floor. In the real world, the American flag flies proudly from this flagpole. But here, 200 years after the apocalypse, no flag flies. Turning around, we see howitzers pointed across the river towards Caesar's Legion. Looks like the NCR is gearing up for the coming battle. But to find Ranger Grant, we must head through the doors into the visitor center. We arrive in a large round room, decorated in the Art Deco style that was popular at the time of this dam's construction. On the receptionist counter, we find the Hoover Dam Snow Globe. You have found a limited edition Mojave Landmark Snow Globe. We can now put this with the others in our collection at the Lucky 38. And turning around, we find Ranger Grant giving orders to other rangers. I've heard of you. I'm glad you're here to help us out. This is a delicate matter, and we need all the help we can get from people we can trust. We've got a lot to do to prepare for the President's visit, and not much time. Once we start, we'll be on a strict timetable. Are you ready? I have some questions first. Ask your questions, but keep it short. Can I use my weapons during the President's visit? We trust you, so you're free to have your weapons. Just don't do anything too crazy, and we'll back you up. If our reputation was too low, he would have said no here, and NCR troopers would have fired upon us if we drew our weapons during this quest, making it much more difficult to complete. Well, Ranger, what are your security arrangements? Security detail consists of Rangers stationed here at the dam. Some will keep an eye on the crown while others will watch the perimeter. Snipers and sharpshooters have been assigned to key locations, and we also have a special canine unit sniffing out members of the crowd. I've also locked down access to critical locations such as the landing platform on the visitor center. I'm gonna need access everywhere. Alright, I'll give you full access. Again, if our reputation was too low, he would have said no here. But we need this access in order to conduct our security sweep. If we don't get his permission, we'll have to find other ways, including possibly wearing an NCR disguise. Do you have a detailed schedule for the visit? I have a full itinerary here. Here you go. Grant gives us a note, President Kimball's itinerary. Taking a look at it in our inventory. Hoover Dam Presidential Visit Schedule. The President will visit Hoover Dam to give a speech to the troops and award a medal to Private Watson for his bravery and service to the NCR. The President is scheduled to arrive via Vertibird from California. The Vertibird will land on top of the Visitor Center, where Colonel Moore will greet the President and escort him out to the stage. After a brief introduction by Colonel Moore, the President will give his speech. The speech will only take approximately four minutes. During the speech, the President will award a medal to Private Jeremy Watson for his service to the NCR. Once the speech is over, the President will be escorted directly back through the Visitor Center to his vertebrae for immediate departure. In the event of an emergency, the speech will be cancelled, and the President will be rushed to the vertebrae for immediate departure. If there is a problem with the vertebrae, a room on the second level of the Visitor Center will be used as a safe room to keep the President secure until any threat is over. Access to this room has been restricted and Colonel Moore has the key in her desk. Thanks for that, Ranger Grant. Do you have any leads on possible security threats? The Legion will definitely try something. We don't have any solid leads yet. I'd almost expect something direct from them, but given the circumstances, there's a possibility of something more subtle, like sabotage. 
But since we don't have anything solid, we'll just have to keep our eyes out for anything out of the ordinary. What can I do to help? Someone like you. I'm just glad to have you on board. Do whatever you can. Security sweeps, talk to people, keep an eye out. If there's nothing else, then let's get moving. All right, I'm all set. Good. The President doesn't arrive until tomorrow. Get some rest. I'll brief you in the morning. After a good night's sleep, we can check back in with Rancher Grant. Glad you could join us. Most of my men are already on duty, and the crowd has already started gathering outside. We've got a busy day ahead of us. So what's the plan for today? The plan is to get through today without the shit hitting the fan. So I'll be overseeing the security team personally, and keeping in constant contact with people over the radio. It's a good bet that the Legion is gonna try something today, so we have to be prepared for anything. We'll do whatever it takes to get the President through this visit in one piece. Let's get this show on the road. President Kimball is arriving shortly. If you want to do any last-minute security sweeps or take a look around for anything suspicious, do it now. Once you're ready, meet me outside on the observation deck. But don't take too long. With that, Ranger Grant and his other Rangers head outside. But we need to do a security sweep. If the Legion has sabotaged this place, we should keep an eye out for clues. We'll start by reading the nearby front desk terminal. It's locked with an average lock, but after hacking it, we find three entries. The first is Hoover Dam Security Report. Security Report, Ranger Grant. With the President's arrival today, security is running a final sweep of the area, making preparations. Only members of the security team will have weapons at the President's speech. This means that all troopers at the speech must relinquish their weapons beforehand. We will limit the number of people allowed to see the speech to a small number to reduce any potential risk to the President. I've gotten word that the President is traveling with only two Rangers, so our security team will need to be on full alert. I'd still like to log my concerns about not having enough time to prepare for this. But we'll do our job here today. Grant. <sighs> Sounds like this whole thing was rushed. Poor Grant didn't have time to prepare. In the next one, Security Duty Roster. We notice that the duty roster has been accessed by an unknown login ID. It'd be a good idea to keep an eye out for anything out of the ordinary. Hmm... Attention security personnel, regarding security assignments for the President's visit, the basic assignments are this. Rangers will secure the perimeter and keep an eye out for any external threats. Additional Rangers will be stationed around the stage and the crowd. Their primary job is to keep an eye on the crowd to make sure nothing funny happens. I want sharpshooters positioned at the following potential sniper locations. The Visitor's Center roof, the Western Ridge, and the Dam Tower Number 1 roof. I want a radio up here to check in. Stay frosty today. Nothing bad is going to happen on our watch. Grant. So somebody accessed this log using faulty credentials. What did they learn? Well, they learned the three potential places where Grant was going to place NCR Ranger snipers. What does this tell us? Could it be that the Legion is trying to take out the snipers before they attempt the assassination? Or maybe they just wanted to know where the sharpshooters would be so that they could avoid them. Or could the Legion be planting one of their snipers in place of one of the NCRs? Looks like we need to examine each of these sniper roosts. In the final one, Engineering Report. Engineering Report, Mike Lawson. We've received word that the President's Vertibird is having some issues with the flight control computer. I've had some of the techs here examine the logs that were sent, and we think we can fix the issue with a small computer update. Ranger Grant has given me permission to have one of the NCR engineers examine the Vertibird when it arrives, as well as having our computer update the Vertibird systems after it arrives. Mike Lawson. So wait a minute, does this mean that an engineer is going to be fiddling with the Vertibird after it lands? Well, if anything screams of a potential sabotage opportunity, that's it. Well, we have quite a few options. Where to start? Well, on this ground floor of the Visitor's Center, we find a few doors leading deeper into the dam. These are just the barracks and manned by NCR personnel. We don't need to go there, so instead we'll go upstairs. We see a few ruined displays from before the war, and a woman walking around aimlessly. Hey, you haven't seen my friend around here, have you? His name is Ben, and he's an engineer. We were supposed to meet up so we can watch the President's speech together, but he hasn't shown up yet. I haven't seen him. Okay. Well, I guess I'll just keep waiting. Sorry to bother you. Maybe he's down in the barracks. He isn't. I already checked there this morning. We were supposed to meet up here about an hour ago. I guess I'll just keep waiting. 
Sorry to bother you. We could be senselessly mean to Allison and say, he probably ditched you for someone cuter. Why would you say something like that? That's just mean. Just leave me alone. Ah, poor girl. But wait a minute. She had an engineer friend who went missing? Didn't we just read that Grant was going to have one of his engineers work on President Kimball's vertebrate? Uh-oh. We need to find this engineer. We see a door leading back outside, and then we find a very hard locked door here. There's a spiral staircase leading up, and that's it for this level. I want to make sure I didn't miss anything, so heading back downstairs, we find a door leading to a supply closet under the stairs. Heading inside, what's this? We see a blood smear on the ground next to a toolbox. If we examine it, there is a pool of blood on the floor. It requires perception of six to examine it. If our perception is high enough and we examine the stain, we examine the area and notice a bloody wrench and a toolbox nearby. Someone was killed here recently, and judging by the scene, it was one of the engineers. We should keep our eyes open for any engineers acting strangely. Oh no, Allison's friend was murdered, and they did something to dispose of the body. Could it have been stuffed in one of these lockers? Well, we do find an NCR engineer jumpsuit in here, but no body. This jumpsuit is useful for those with lower reputation with the NCR, because it does count as faction armor, which means if we wear this jumpsuit, we gain access to areas that otherwise would turn the NCR hostile if we explored them. Well, things just got really complicated. First, we learn that some unauthorized saboteur successfully found out sniper positions from the lobby terminal. And we learned that an assassin killed an NCR engineer. And that President Kimball's vertebrate has a computer problem that will be fixed by an engineer once it lands on the roof. Heading upstairs to continue our investigation, I really wanted to find out what was in this hard-locked door. So consuming a locksmith's reader to push my lockpicking skill above 100, we can pick the hard-locked doors. Also remember, we learned from the itinerary that a key to this door is held in Colonel Moore's desk. We could delve deeper into the dam to find her office and steal the key from her desk. But inside, we don't find anything out of the ordinary. This, however, must be the room we read about in Ranger Grant's itinerary. This is the room where the Rangers will hide President Kimball if anything goes wrong with the vertebrate. That's good to know. We'll remember that for later. Heading out and turning right, we see some spiral stairs leading to the roof. Heading up top, sure enough, we see a vertebrate landing pad. We find one NCR Ranger sniper, just as the lobby terminal told us we would. Looking over, we see the monument to the west and a hillside, but we don't see anything on the hillside, though we do see the tower and a Ranger perched atop the tower. So those are the three sniper vantage points, but only two are manned with rangers. Turning to the southeast, we see a ladder leading down to the ground. Okay, so we can reach the vertebrate landing pad either from inside the visitor center or from outside. Good to know. Well, we've scoured this visitor center, turning it upside down, and I think we've walked away with all possible clues. With President Kimball arriving at any moment, we need to head outside and check in with Ranger Grant. Have you finished your security sweep? I'm ready. When will the president be here? Looks like that's his vertebrate coming right now. It's showtime. Let's not mess this up. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got some security procedures to oversee. Ranger Grant attends to his men, and pretty soon we hear the buzzing of vertebrate propellers. We see it coming from the northwest. I want to make sure that we witness absolutely everything when it lands, so racing beyond the gate, we can climb the ladder to the top of the visitor center, where we know this vertebrate will land. Sure enough, President Kimball and two rangers exit the vertebrate. But contrary to the itinerary, Colonel Moore never shows up. Oh wait, what's this guy doing? Oh, that must be the engineer here to upgrade the vertebrate's computer. Wait a minute. Vertebrates don't have computers in their wheels. Something fishy just went on here. Walking over to the vertebrate. 
You were looking at the presidential vertebird. The assassins could have done something to the vertebird. You need a repair or an explosive skill of 50 or higher to examine it. I do. So upon examining the vertebird, we search the vertebird and notice a strange item that doesn't belong. Upon examination, we notice that it's a bomb. We skillfully disable the bomb and remove it from the vertebird. Ha-ha! We have thwarted the assassin! This could have gone a couple of different ways. If we intercepted the assassin before he reached the vertebird... Is there a problem here? Oh, no problem here. Then leave me alone. Actually, you're the problem here. I'm not sure what you mean. I think you have me confused with someone else. Oh, my mistake. Yeah, thought so. Just come with me right now. Sorry, that just ain't gonna happen. For Kaisar. <laughs> he blows himself up, killing us in the process. The engineer was strapped with explosives. Well, it's a good thing we didn't talk to him then. But this means that we've lost the engineer. Somewhere out there is a rogue Legion assassin. Peering over the side, we see President Kimball approach the stage. Who have come, come so far, far to the call to serve Whoa! Put forward by the Republic. Did you see that? Just as his speech began, someone pushed the NCR Ranger sniper off the tower to his death. Oh no, it's that second assassin. We've got to do something about it. Taking the ladder down, we can head towards the crowd. And there's the Legion assassin dressed up as an engineer. He's walking into the crowd. We've got to intercept him before we lose him. But Boone chooses this moment to share with us his thoughts. If I was the assassin, I'd be up on that ridge. Or if I didn't care about escaping, maybe that near tower. Or the landing pad behind us. He must not have seen the Legion assassin kill the ranger on the opposite tower like we did. But Boone is right here on two accounts. There's no one on the western ridge, but there was an assassin on the landing pad and the tower. But oh no, we've lost the engineer. He merged seamlessly into the crowd. Look at all of these people, NCR troopers, civilians, and a bunch of engineers. Which one of these looks like a legionary? Is it this guy? No. What about this engineer? What about this guy? Hey, wait a minute. Oh yeah, he looks like a legionary. Creeping behind him, we can crouch down until we're hidden. And on his inventory, we find a redundant failsafe detonator. If we pickpocket it, we can prevent the legionary from detonating the explosive. This is useful if we didn't have high enough repair or explosive skill to disarm the bomb. Another way to spot the engineer in the crowd is to wait for a moment in the speech when the crowd is applauding. If we look closely, we see that everyone cheers or claps except the legionary assassin. Thank you. Thank you. In this way, we can easily pick him out. Well, the assassin dressed up like an engineer may still be alive, but at least we've thwarted his plan. Now to deal with the sniper on the tower. Racing forward, we see the body of the ranger on the ground. This ranger was killed not too long ago. He looks to be the sniper that was stationed to watch from the top of this tower. What a fall. We see a ramp erected to the side of the building and a ladder that brings us up top. Climbing the ladder. What are you doing up here? I need you to radio in an emergency report. Settle down. No one uses the radio until I know what's going on. There's a dead ranger downstairs. Oh, shit. Really? We should go take a look. Is it okay for you to leave your post? We're just going to be a moment. We should both take a look first. Uh, let's radio it in first. Uh, I think I should check it out first before radioing it in. Uh-huh. Uh, no. Radio it in first. Fuck it. You are more trouble than you're worth. And with that, we thwart the assassination attempt. Alternatively, if we went along with this guy and said, Oh, you want me to go first? Sure, let's go! Okay, lead the way. He immediately turns hostile, prepared to shoot us when our back is turned. Now there is a way to save the ranger's life. Instead of going to the vertebrate landing pad first, as soon as we see the vertebrate in the sky, we can run straight towards the sniper tower. Climbing to the top, we see the real ranger at his post, and we can wait for the assassin to arrive. Thank you, my 
If we're fast enough, we can kill the assassin before he can murder the ranger. But if for some reason we missed the legionary assassin, kill the NCR ranger, and we never discovered his body, if we look closely, towards the end of the speech, we can see the assassin lining up his shot. This gives us a brief period of time to race to the top of the tower to deal with the assassin before the inevitable happens. If, however, we successfully prevented the assassination attempt, we can check in with Ranger Grant from the ham radio. Oh, we're all fine here, thank you. How are you? Quit goofing off and clear the channel. I'll be damned if the president dies on my watch because you were screwing around. I found a Legion sniper on the roof of the tower. Damn it. I can't believe the Legion actually got someone past our security. Good job catching him. I'll have a security team sweep the area to see if the Legion has any more surprises for us. I'm also canceling the president's speech. We'll have a security team get him out of here right away. But let's not relax until he's safe. With that, Ranger Grant cancels the president's speech and sends two rangers to escort the president from the stage. Wait, wait. Where did that engineer go? Oh, the engineer tried to assassinate the president with a knife. Looks like an NCR ranger got in the way instead. We find both the corpse of the ranger and the engineer lying on the stage. At least the rangers were quick enough to kill him before he got to the president. The engineer only resorts to assassinating with a knife if we inform Grant about the sabotage. There are many ways to tell Grant about the sabotage. The ham radio on the tower, like we just explored. Or, if we couldn't disarm the bomb, but we found the detonator on the engineer, we can go to Grant and say, I found a detonator on that man over there. What the hell? This must control some sort of bomb that he was going to use to kill the president. Nice work catching this. I'll have my rangers go deal with this man right away. Grant sends two rangers to apprehend the engineer. Rangers, to discuss terms of what would become, what become the ranger unification treaty. The legionary assassin, dressed like an engineer, kills one of the rangers before he's dispatched. Or another way this can play out is if we never got rid of that assassin on the tower and we never learned which engineer was responsible, but we did disable the bomb, we can go to Ranger Grant and tell him that we found a bomb on the vertebird. His response then is to send two rangers to end the speech and escort President Kimball from the stage. But if they do, the legionary assassin dressed as an engineer charges the stage. <laughs> Now remember in the itinerary, we read that if anything were to go wrong with the Vertibird, the Rangers were to escort President Kimball into that locked room inside the visitor center. So if we report to Ranger Grant the bomb on the Vertibird, that's exactly what they do. They run up the stairs and then open the doors to the visitor center. Ah! Somehow, the Legion got a bomb in the safe room. This is incredibly frustrating, because no matter what we do, we can't disable the bomb. The only way to prevent President Kimball's death is to prevent him from coming to this room to begin with, which means we can't ever report to Ranger Grant about the bomb on the Vertibird. I went through this room with a fine-toothed comb examining everything we could interact with, and there's just no bomb here. To make things more frustrating, there's no evidence of any sabotage. If we find Colonel Moore's office deeper in the dam, we discover the safe room key in her desk, just as the itinerary said we would. However, if the key is still in this desk, even after the president is assassinated, then this means that either the Legion picked this door, planted the bomb, left and and then relocked the door, or that Colonel Moore herself was somehow involved in President Kimball's assassination. But we learn all about Colonel Moore's personality when completing these quests with the NCR, and she's a die-hard President Kimball supporter, so there's no way that she would ever try to murder the guy. So I have no explanation as to how the Legion could have possibly planted a bomb in the safe room. 
At any rate, if President Kimball dies, on his body, we find a unique item, President Kimball's suit. This, of course, is the only one in the entire game. It's not very interesting. It has zero DR, but it does grant plus five to speech. It's a handsome suit, however, distinct from the dirty pre-war suits. It's a dark navy pinstripe blue, and it has an NCR flag pin pinned to the lapel. Allowing Kimball to be killed is the only way to get it. If we never discovered the bomb on the vertebrate, after President Kimball finishes his speech, he walks towards the visitor center, and the vertebrate takes off. If Kimball dies in any of the ways shown here, we fail the quest, and when we return to Mr. House, he expresses his disappointment. Kimball is dead. What a mess you've made. So Kimball's dead. So what? Every step of my plan has been precisely calculated and was, until now, well executed. What more could I have done? You could have succeeded. I did my best but the Legion just did better. Your incompetence has jeopardized the success of this entire concern. Up to this point, your efforts yielded near-perfect results, but now I'm forced to fumble in the dark, to gamble. Light must be brought to this darkness. But the best way to complete this mission is to disarm the bomb, kill the assassin on the tower, and then let President Kimball finish his speech without telling Grant about the sabotage. If we do so, then the engineer assassin has no reason to believe that his sabotage didn't work. After all, he'll only find out about his failure when he tries to use the detonator after the vertebrate takes off. And so he allows President Kimball to return to his vertebrate. It flies away unharmed, the Legion fails, and we complete the quest, you'll know it when it happens. And with that, we can report our success to Mr. House. If not for you, President Kimball would be dead. So you needn't feel guilty when the NCR's route from Hoover Dam demolishes his political career. What's the next step? The Legion has nothing left to wait for. Their assault on the dam could begin at any moment. Before that happens, I'll ask you to complete one other task. It may seem trivial, but that's far from the case. Between the Strip and Helios 1 lies the El Dorado Electrical Substation. Humble as it appears, the substation has immense strategic value, for it's there that you'll jumpstart the Lucky 38's dormant reactor. Gain access to the substation's control room and install this override module. Just so you know, there are NCR troops guarding the station. What's this about a dormant reactor? The strain of defending Las Vegas from annihilation exceeded my power system's capacity. My primary reactor shut down. For years, I played a miser with my emergency power supply. I began to run out of reserves around the time I woke the first batch of Securitrons. Negotiating an allotment of power from Hoover Dam was crucial. That's what's powered the Strip for the past seven years. Why didn't you restart the reactor earlier? I needed the operating software on the Platinum chip to bring it back online. And to start the reactor itself requires a tremendous jolt of current. Very attention-getting. The NCR has its hands full now, of course. I doubt they'll raise much of a fuss. You already have power. Why is this important? This is not a good time to be dependent on energy from Hoover Dam. When the Legion attacks, the NCR may cut power altogether. And I'll be needing a good deal more power than the NCR has allotted to the Strip. Broadcasting encrypted VMQ-boosted command signals to hundreds of Securitrons eats up more power than you might expect. All right, I'll take care of it. With this accomplished, all preparations will have been made. The battle for Hoover Dam will be upon us before long.
To find the El Dorado Electrical Substation, we head to the 188 Trading Post. From here, we follow a bunch of electrical towers west until they turn south into the mountains. They stop at a ledge overlooking El Dorado, just north of Helios 1. We see a bunch of NCR milling about outside, and just as we hop down... Stay out of the control room and enclosure, or there's going to be trouble. Got it? Despite this warning, the NCR don't really do anything when we enter the substation, although the soldiers here do have unique dialogue. All the juice from Hoover flows right through the Dorado, and we send it west to keep the home lights burning. Look all you want. Just don't mess with any of the equipment. The control room's off limits, and so is the enclosure. Heading inside, we see that the NCR has been using this as a bit of a barracks. Mattresses on the ground, small containers littered about. We can find an Etotronic on the wall, but it's empty, sadly. And on the wall to the northwest, we find a terminal, El Dorado substation. We find an option to leave it alone or to power the substation. Upon powering the substation, we gain NCR infamy, which could potentially be enough to cause the NCR outside to turn hostile. But thankfully, since I was idolized, the NCR continued to ignore me upon leaving the substation. When this minor task is done, we can head back to house to check in. As you can see, Vegas is humming along. I've tested my C3I broadcasting arrays. Everything is in order. And just in time, as it turns out, the forces of Caesar's Legion are on the march, establishing a staging area east of the dam. Their assault could begin at any moment, so that's where you'll be heading if you're ready. Hoover Dam. Why do I need to be there? The NCR has an army. Indeed they do. An army that'll be too distracted with killing legionaries to notice the real reason you're there. Your objective is to reach a control room halfway across the dam and install an override module similar to the one you used at the substation. The override will enable me to control the entire dam's power output. You may remember how the bunker at the fort was rather dimly lit. Well, just like the Lucky 38, it needs a big jolt of electricity to power up. You've already uploaded the new operating system to the Securitrons. All they need is power, and they'll be in fighting trim. I have some questions first. Even now, on the brink of battle... What should I expect at the dam? Imagine two snarling dogs fighting over a curve of bone. Perhaps the rib of their master long dead. It'll be a pitched battle, that's a certainty. Perhaps the greatest battle the Earth has seen since the human race nearly made itself extinct. Any speculation on Legion tactics? The Legion will mount a ferocious and determined frontal assault from the east. That much is certain. Still, Caesar is a capable strategist. I'd be surprised if he hasn't found some way to infiltrate the dam or the NCR's rear areas. Let's get back to business. As I've said, your objective is to install an override module in the control room halfway across the dam. Are you ready to perform this task? Sounds like I get to kill a lot of legionaries. Indeed you will. Just bear in mind that's not the reason you're there. The NCR will welcome my help. Precisely. You'll have no trouble joining the battle on their side, and they'll be too distracted to notice why you're really there. I'm ready. Let's finish this. We've accomplished a great deal, you and I. One last task and our work is complete. I'll see you in the control room. You are committing to fight for Mr. House at the Battle of Hoover Dam, which will determine the fate of New Vegas for decades to come. If there's anything you want to do before you enter the battle, do it now, before you cross the point of no return. You know what? Let's do this. We arrive at Hoover Dam, and we find it on fire! We must now reach the control terminal and install an override module for Mr. House, all the while pretending to be assisting the NCR in their fight and dodging Legion bullets. We'll explore the dramatic conclusion to the Mr. House plot of Fall of New Vegas in our next episode. I publish many videos each week here on my channel, so if you want to make sure you don't miss my next episode, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. I've created a bunch of new emojis for YouTube sponsors, so if you'd like to get your hands on these emojis, consider becoming a sponsor here on YouTube. I've got a brand new shirt in the shop, folks. Protecting the people at a minute's notice.
we see the hero looking off into the distance, just as lightning strikes between three artillery flares. You can find this beautiful painting on men's and women's shirts. The shirts come in a wide array of colors and in a variety of sizes, and you can find the design on a bunch of other items as well. If interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming a sponsor here on YouTube or a patron on Patreon. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with the exciting conclusion to The House Always Wins.